Y'all, check it out. Got the 24 foot bay boat loaded up. Got a little bit of a breeze. Just left or about to leave for one of my absolute favorite places here in the entire state of Alabama, and that's JM Tackle. I just stocked up with some bait, have some ice, got me some food and drinks for the water. This is my 24 foot bay boat, got a Yamaha 250, 85 gallons of fuel. And we're ready to go offshore, y'all. My name's Steven. Welcome to the channel with Bama Saltwater Fishing. And I will see y'all on the water. Y'all, so we just got to our spot offshore, about 50 feet. Northern Gulf of Mexico is pretty shallow out here, no matter how far you go. But see, we're sitting on top of a pyramid. There it is. And then those are the fish we're after. See those bigger marks up top? Those are most likely trigger fish. That's probably a big old snapper. And then you see some bait there as well. So we're gonna drop down a whole squid because might as well, if you can only keep one trigger, you might as well try to catch the biggest one on the reef. I have the pinpoint anchor system going on the trolling motor and it's gonna put us back over this reef. See, we're marking a bunch of fish at 30 feet. We're in 50 feet. You wanna drop down to where the fish are. You don't always have to drop down to the bottom because typically a lot of these bigger fish will be up top because they're not necessarily afraid of being eaten by a bigger predator versus a real tiny babies. You know, my setup's real easy. I just have a squid and I've hooked it a couple times with a seven aught Mustad circle hook, 50 pound mono leader. And this is about two and a half foot a leader coming to a barrel swivel. Now on my leader, I have a four ounce egg weight that can freely slide up and down. This is just called a basic knocker rig. Dropping it down, like I said, about to that 30 foot range. All right, now it's just a waiting game. Usually it doesn't take too long. Oh, all right, first fish hooked up. Hmm, feels like a good one. Now with circle hooks, you just start reeling. Once that line bows over, just start putting pressure on it and reel. Majority of the time, they'll get it right in the corner of their mouth. Now, I wish it was red snapper season, but it's not, because that would be a really nice keeper right there. But see where the circle hook is? Alabama has a great red snapper population. Thankfully, a lot of money goes into putting reefs out. We have one of the biggest artificial man-made reef zones in the entire Gulf. It's time to drop down the banana jig on my inshore setup. Once it's down, just give it some sharp twitches. You never know when they're gonna hit it. So always be prepared like that. Something just smacked it. The water's not super clear, so it's gonna take a little bit. There we go. They love that little jig, I'm telling you. And it's fun catching them on this light tackle like this. So there's a trigger fish. That's what's stealing all my bait. He's not gonna be a keeper, but they do like that jig, especially the teaser. Majority of the time you'll catch them on that teaser. So time to let him go, see if we can catch one bigger. But all I've tied up is a little banana jig. Got these at J&M Tackle on my way over here with the little teaser. And I tie a loop knot and 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'm running about a foot of leader to a black barrel swivel. Primarily used for pompano, but you can catch a bunch of stuff on these little things. And just like that, we have another fish on, on the little Pompano jig. So there's a Tom Tate or Ruby Red Lips. They like these things too. See if I can show you why they call them Ruby Reds. You've seen me show this on the channel before, but if you haven't, they have a big old mouth. You hear that sound? He's like, put me back. But see how red their mouth is? We're gonna let him go, but that one right there, if snapper season was open, I'd keep him. <laughs> that's incredibly exciting when they hit that jig you never know when they're going to do it but there's another trigger fish much smaller this time 
<laughs> they need to go the opposite way. They need to get bigger. But these are notorious bait thieves. Ones these sides, if you're snapper fishing, drop down a cigar minnow, those little teeth will tear them up. But he gets to go back and maybe a couple years, we'll come back and catch him. It's like, no. <laughs> All right, dropping the jig back down, getting some good marks. See if we can catch a big one on this. There we go, that's the type of pull we want. Or at least it started out like it. Come on. Lizard fish. <laughs> what else are we gonna get? Here's a dang lizard fish. If you go fish Little Lagoon, you know way too much about these because they are all over Little Lagoon. But that's a lizard fish. They are edible, very bony. Majority of the time, not really worth cleaning, but you can't eat them. No limit on them. They see why they call them lizard fish? Because they kind of look like a lizard in the face, but they're a fish, obviously. <laughs> but he's gonna go back. At least that adds to the species list for today. That's always fun. I like catching different species because you can't do it anywhere else other than in salt waters. Catch that many different species on just one area. That one hit it pretty hard. What is that? <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it's running out. Mm. What the heck do I have? Y'all, I don't know what this is. Oh, big shark! Big shark! That's huge! Well, I say huge, he's like eight foot long. I think that jig's probably going to be a goner at this point. I don't know if I can get underneath the trolling motor. Mm. Yo, that's insane. I have a big shark on. Really big. I don't know if he grabbed my jig or if he grabbed the fish that had my jig. But that is crazy. I just saw him come shoot the boat. Wow. This jig seems to like sharks a lot. That's insane. As long as he doesn't get that leader in his mouth. This is gonna be a while. I can already tell you that. Come on, Daiwa and Star Rod. Put a whooping on him. Oh, yeah. This is stupid. <laughs> this isn't fun. <laughs> Not fun. It was for a second. If that's the black tip or spinner, he's a keeper. He's coming around the boat. There he is. Can you see him? Y'all see it? That's a big one. Look at that thing. It's a black tip. He would be a keeper too. Y'all want to see a shark catch and cook? I love sharks, but this one might be worth keeping. Like I love sharks, I respect them, but there are a bunch of them out here. If I can get them up, I might need a bigger gaff. <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep that thing. We're going to do a shark catch and cook. Come here. Come here. You big beast. Uh, hopefully I'm getting good footage of them. Uh, mm, here he is. Oh, he's not happy. I don't blame him. Wow. Look at that. Mm, this is not going to be good. 
Get his head up. Okay, there he is. Y'all, we're gonna harvest this shark if I can get a hold of it with the gaff. I don't know how that's gonna work out. It's not gonna be pretty. I told you, it's not gonna be pretty. This isn't something I recommend to do on your own. He's right here. If I get him, I get him. If not, that's fine. Y'all, this is insane. Not. It was fun for a while. Now it's just like, <laughs> like either break me off or let me bring you on. <clears throat> this isn't your typical bait caster either for like bass. These are heavy duty. This is a Daiwa Lexa bait caster, Star Plasma 2 slow pitch rod. Whew. Okay, we're back at my top shot. That's an FG knot connecting my 50 pound mono leader to my braid. Maybe if I can get them in the mouth, get my jig back. I don't know. Legally, you can harvest them in the state of Alabama. Got them. Okay. This is not going to be fun. Holy crap. Here we go. Okay, he's in the boat. This is actually, I was wrong. It's not a black tip. It's a spinner shark, which you're still allowed to keep a spinner shark too. So, whew. I gotta recover and I'll show you this fish. <laughs> That's insane. This is not gonna to go to waste and I'm legally allowed to harvest one of these sharks and they have to be 54 inches and the shark makes it no problem. But this is actually a spinner shark. These are really cool. There's an overabundance of them, which is a good thing. That's why we're legally allowed to harvest them. I rarely keep sharks. So this will probably be the last one I keep in a long time and I hadn't kept one in a long time. But I was on the slow pitch jig. We're gonna get this sucker back as soon as we can i'm done fishing and get him to our cleaning table that is awesome look how wide his body is but this guy will put in some work with that star wow and there's my jig in his mouth so i'm going to cut that up and we're going to go ahead and head back and i'll show you this more close y'all made it back home so i went ahead and field dressed it anytime you catch a shark like this if you want to keep the meat fresh gut it immediately and then bury it in some ice and that's what i did look how beautiful this white meat is if you're ever unfamiliar with eating shark there actually is all cartilage there's no bones in there at all their skin is super super rough you could run your hand across like this all day long but as soon as you go back it's just like sandpaper it is super rough but i feel dressed it removed the head I removed the tail just to make it more manageable. There's a lot of meat in the head that I want to save as well. But today, I have two knives here. This one's a sword serrated knife because you need that to really cut through the skin. You'll dull the heck out of your other one. And this is the nine inch flex fillet by sword as well. There'll be a link in the description down below if you want to go pick them up. Awesome fillet knives, that's all I use. Is last time I cleaned a shark, I had a fine tooth shark and I staked it out and grilled it, but I went through the top of the skin and that was not fun at all. So I think I'm going to fillet this one out. So we're going to start with our serrated knife. There's multiple ways of doing this. This is just the way I do it. If you have a different way, do it that way. But we're going to fillet this out. Look how thick this meat is. There's no bones. That is all cartilage. 
Hear that? Doesn't sound like bone. Sounds like I'm hitting rubber. But that's what that is. It's cartilage. It feels like plastic. So we're gonna take this serrated and go through the top of this skin. So here we go. Oh yeah, that serrated's making a lot easier work than it was last time for me. Gonna take our time with it. Don't wanna waste any of this. This is a beautiful critter. We're, I was blessed to be able to land it and I don't wanna waste any of this meat. It's all gonna go to good use. So see, I'm getting through this body. It's gonna go through the rest of it. All the way down this fish. Oh, I say fish, but this is a shark. It's in the shark family. Now I don't clean shark much. I don't keep them often at all. So I'm just taking my time and let my knife do the work and not going too deep. There we go. So we got through the tough skin. Now we're going to take our flexible sword. See, it's flexible. It allows you to work around the cartilage or bone. And just fillet it just like I would anything else, really. So we're just going down. Kind of pulling the meat away. And just carving it out. There we go. See that? There's its spine right there. Look at that. A lot of meat on these things. And hardly any red meat at all. This is very good looking fresh. I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to cleaning shark. But I think we're getting it done. Use that serrated to get through the rest of the skin back here. Now we have one side of this shark. Look at that. Things big. That's going to feed a lot of people. A lot of people. So that is awesome. Look how thick that is. Let's finish this other side. I'm going to put this on ice real quick. Now we have this belly meat. This is the bottom half of this shark. Look how thick that belly meat is. So I'm going to take that serrated again and go through and get this belly meat off. Look at that big slab of stuff. That is awesome. Heck yeah. And all we got to do is take this lining off. This is connective tissue or stomach lining. We'll take that off. Y'all know we have one side finished. Look at that spine. That's pretty neat. They're very flexible. I mean, extremely flexible. That's what makes them kind of hard to deal with because they can really reach around and bite you pretty easily. You gotta have a healthy respect for them. I would say healthy fear, but you have to have a healthy respect because I don't really fear sharks, but I do love them and I do respect them. And that's why we're taking our time trying to not be wasteful. There's that fish's entire spinal cord. Look at that. Wow. It's pretty cool. So a lot of this meat's gonna go in the crab trap as well, like this, because I do want some fresh blue crabs. Now that it's in a more manageable piece, look at this. Doesn't that look good? It's time to fillet it off the skin. They do have a little bit of bloodline going through the middle. And we're gonna kind of do like you would a tuna, where you go through the middle of it and get that top loin and then that bottom loin. And now fillet it off the skin. There we go. So one advantage of the skin being hard to cut through is if you take your regular knife, you can cut right up against it. So now all I'm doing is just trimming off this red meat. That's it. And then we'll have a nice boneless or cartilage free filet of shark. So see all that bloodline? That won't taste good at all. So just trim it out.
Don't want any of that in there. And that'll go in the crab trap. Blue crabs love it. Now that's an awesome piece of meat right there that is hard to come by. It took some work getting it in and it's gonna be greatly appreciated by everyone that eats it. Let's cut this into manageable pieces, kind of like small pieces. I'm gonna do about a fist width. There we go. Looks good. And these can either go on the grill. So that's all it is. You saw me flay it out, trim up the red meat. It's tough cleaning shark, but you can get it done if you have the right tools and patience. Serrated knife is practically a must for this type of cleaning. Or if you have like a cleaver, I know everybody in different countries clean them pretty quick. But I'm gonna finish this shark, making it into these bite-sized pieces, and I'll probably see y'all cleaned up and ready to eat or cook them. Y'all, guess what? It's the next day. I'm cleaned up. I don't feel nasty. My back's a little sore. So is my hand from fighting that big old shark. But that was fun. So I gave a lot of that fish away to a bunch of my friends. None of that meat went to waste, which is awesome. I legally harvest those very, very rarely. But like I said, I'm legally allowed to harvest one a day in the state of Alabama. And I want to make sure that none of it went to waste. So it didn't. Now I kept a few of these steaks for myself. Look at that. That is a beautiful, organic, fresh piece of meat straight from the Gulf of Mexico. Nothing bad about it. There's zero nasty smell at all. I mean zero. Like no ammonia smell. It was dressed and gutted as soon as I got it on the boat and brought home. And there's nothing nasty about that. Look at that. Beautiful meat. No antibiotics, no preservatives. You can't get any fresher. We're going to do some teriyaki shark. It's very simple, pretty much hibachi style. I have a kikkoman teriyaki sauce, some sea salt, some black peppercorns that we're going to crush up, some sriracha, just like that. We'll be cooking on the blackstone. I'll have some steamed vegetables on the side. And right now, we're also steaming some white rice. So that's awesome. First thing I need to do, though, is cut these steaks up into more manageable pieces. And that's what I'm going to do. Look at that. Those are beautiful pieces of shark. It's amazing. Getting them into small bite-sized pieces. Shark doesn't really cook like fish. It cooks more like pork and chicken. So we're gonna make an abachi style teriyaki shark. Now we have our shark in a manageable bite-sized pieces. All I'm gonna do is take some vegetable oil and coat it up just like that. Take our fresh cracked black pepper. And now some freshly cracked sea salt. There we go. That thing's kind of janky, <laughs> but it worked. Now all I'm gonna do is mix this around, get it evenly coated. Shark can really take seasoning. So some fish you don't want to over season like sheep's head, pompano, you don't want to throw a whole bunch of stuff on there. Now I've got one more a little secret ingredient and that is this Big Mike's all-purpose seasoning. If you've ever eaten at Big Mike's Steakhouse, very, very good. There we go. Oh yeah, that's going to be good. Alrighty. And that's just a really nice mix. If you have your favorite steak seasoning, you can use that or all-purpose seasoning. But this stuff's very good. Get that all coated and we'll be ready to go warm up our blackstone. So we're gonna let that sit and let those seasonings absorb into the meat for a little bit while our blackstone's warming up. I'll see y'all outside. Hey, guess what? We're out here and we have our blackstone warmed up. I have one side on about medium heat. That's gonna be our steamed vegetable side. Then this side, we're gonna do our hibachi shark. <laughs> so we're gonna take our vegetable oil, make sure nothing sticks this is cast iron look at that do a nice coating if you've ever eaten somewhere like sarku japan in the mall or mikados or any hibachi place this is going to be real similar but with some fresh shark first thing i want to do drop my vegetables down because these are going to be steaming so that's just a mix of cabbage lettuce carrots onion green onion you can throw broccoli in there if you want to. I didn't. 
So we want to add our seasoning. Only thing I'm doing to them is some of this Big Mike's all-purpose seasoning. There we go. <laughs> it's not quite like that, but it works. So get some of our all-purpose seasoning. Mm. Turn the heat down a little bit more. Mix that up. Keep it on this side. And now we add our water. Can't have steam without water. About half a bottle. Hear that sizzling? Smells good already. Now I'm gonna put this in a nice little pile and before all our water boils off, we wanna cover it up as much as we can. There we go. Get as much of it in there as we can. Boom, just like that. And that's gonna steam on real low heat. It's gonna be really good as our side with our rice and shark. So now all we gotta do is put our shark on the grill. Check this out. Y'all ready? It's gonna cook just like chicken. Get that last piece. There we go. I use this one for the back door. Get some more oil on there. You see it's already starting to cook. It's gonna be a very fast process. Look at that, already turning white. See that? Really pretty, it smells good. Once it starts cooking, you'll see it turn white just like I showed you. We'll flip them, mix them up, and then we'll add our teriyaki glaze. Let's check on our vegetables while a shark's cooking. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's what you want. See it steaming? So we'll mix it together some. Let our vegetables get soft. Absorb all that flavor. See how they break down a little bit? How the huge pile of vegetables and it's broken down into this. So if you think you're throwing on too much, you're not. Throw on a lot. We're gonna continue letting those steam and let's put our lid back on. <laughs> and like I said, inside we have some fresh white rice cooking in the rice cooker. It's gonna be good, y'all. So we're gonna take our steamed vegetables off. Look at that. Set this to the side. Scoot those over. And just let those stay warm on the side. I'm gonna kill the heat on that side because we're done with our vegetables. There we go. And that's just gonna stay warm over there until our shark's finished. Now, let's get our shark, start to turn them over. Oh, wow. So we wanna make sure it evenly cooks without burning. Now that we have a nice sear on this shark, I have flipped them and I'm turning this heat all the way up. And they're gonna continue cooking. It's time to add our teriyaki sauce. You can add as little or as much as you want. I love teriyaki. You can make it yourself or you can buy some. It's nice and coated. There we go. Start mixing it together. Oh man. That smells really good. It smells like I'm at the mall or I'm at the hibachi grill getting ready to eat some teriyaki chicken. That smells good. We're just gonna mix it together. And teriyaki is a sweeter sauce. It has sugar in it, so it's gonna sit there and caramelize. You don't want it to burn. That's why I like to continuously flip it. But you want it to caramelize and make a nice coating because this fish will soak it up nice. Y'all, our shark is almost ready. Look at this. See that? Can y'all smell that? I don't think they have smell of vision yet. I wish y'all could because it does smell very, very delicious. I cannot wait to eat this. I haven't had breakfast or anything this morning because I've waited and anticipated to cook this and cannot wait. So we get to do it. We get to try it. And y'all get to experience it with me. So we're just letting these caramelize a little bit more and they're practically ready. We're getting closer to my favorite part and that's eating it. But look at this. Two plates of rice here. It's just some steamed white rice. It's my favorite way of enjoying teriyaki. You gotta have some white rice. Take some of our steamed vegetables. 
check that out on the side got to stay healthy all organic eating and now the main dish check that out oh man does that not look delicious well, I can't believe I cooked that myself. It was very easy. I just like to make these videos so you don't feel intimidated or nervous or anything or just unsure of catching saltwater fish. Like you can do this yourself. You just wanna be careful with stuff with species like this, like shark and you know, don't over harvest and obviously follow all your regulations, yada, yada, yada. But you can do this all yourself from the water, the rigging, getting on the water, harvesting, cooking, and now we're gonna eat it. Fresh, legally harvested, organic shark. Let's give it a try. And if you like a little spice like I do, we have some of the sriracha sauce. Really cool story of this owner that brought this over to the United States. You can go look it up, really neat. But he made a nice business for himself and it tastes good. So I'm gonna add a little bit of sriracha sauce on the side, just like that. All right, I thank you Lord for putting this fish there and allowing me to harvest it, fight it, and it didn't go to waste. Let's try our first bite of our spinner shark. Here we go. Mmm. Not bad. Consistency of chicken, but not as like firm, I should say. There's no fishy taste, no ammonia taste. That's just a basic delicious piece of meat right there. Nothing wrong with it. I like to try some with my rice. Dipped in the sriracha sauce. There we go. Oh, mm-hmm. The sriracha makes it. With the rice, the sriracha, and our vegetables, that is a delicious dish right there. Let's eat some more. Mmm exactly how i wanted it to come out as always i'm gonna let y'all go so i can finish this delicious lunch let me finish chewing real quick and we'll close out the video i appreciate each and every one of y'all for watching i hope you enjoy this catch and cook we'll see you on the next bama saltwater fishing video if you have not subscribed yet the channel is constantly growing it's so amazing to see appreciate each and every one of you go smash that subscribe button see you on the next bama saltwater fishing video I want to thank the good lord up above for everything he does for us as always and we'll see y'all later